Hey, what is up? It is Vinny Designs here back with a new video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a graphic designer, web designer. I will be showing you how you can create some awesome components within Figma, then also create variations of them and use them throughout your design and switch between them very quickly. So let's jump right into Figma and start designing. All right, so we're in Figma now and you can see that I have a few different components and different variations for each of them. And so today I'll be showing you how you can create a few of these. So the first one we're gonna create is a checkbox. Let's see how we can build this out. The first thing to do is drag out a frame and then to the right you can enter a custom value of 16 pixels by 16 pixels and the next thing to do is round out the corner so we have something more smooth so let's set that to two pixels and we can also add a stroke and the stroke keep it at one pixel it that's fine and you can also set a default or custom color let's turn this frame into a component now that this is a component i'll show you how you can create a variant from this so let's go over to the right properties panel and then we can see that there's a variant section hit the plus icon to create a variant you can see that figma duplicated our design and we have two of them now so the first one is set to default and the second one is called variant 2 and if we click the main component and double click we can set a custom name so let's call it check box let's go over to the right side just to see what we have available we can see that under variants we have something called property one and under it it has default and variant two property one is basically what it is it's called properties and we can create sets of properties with different styles and parameters for each of them so for this one we're going to create something called selected and that's going to determine the state of the selection whether it's inactive or active to make this easier for ourselves let's rename default to something more meaningful so let's set it to active or actually inactive let's set it to inactive the variant two let's call it active now we have two different properties applied the first component is set to inactive and the second one is set to active for the active component we're going to create a different variant so to do this we're going to enter another frame within this one so let's create a 8 by 8 pixel and center this and also add a fill to this so we can add a custom fill and change the color to something like a purple or pink or something something that is uh, aligned with your brand and then we can also round out the corners for this so set it to something like one pixel and there you go we have another vari variant of this component and to see how this actually works we will actually drag out a duplicate of this uh, component so if we go to the assets panel we can see our components let's drag out an instance of this box and we can see that it's automatically set to the default variant the cool thing about variants is that i can go to the right side and select which variant i want to use and let's say i want to switch it to the active state what we can do is just go to the drop down and select active and it will switch to the inactive state automatically awesome so now that you have a basic understanding of the checkbox we will create radio buttons and the radio buttons are actually going to be very similar and so we're going to actually just duplicate this uh so we will just duplicate this component and we can actually rename it to something different let's call it radio buttons radio button what we will do is modify these designs all we really have to do for this is just change the corner radius to something like 100 and uh, make it a perfect circle and do the same thing with uh the active state change it to a perfect circle so change it to something like 100 again and the same thing within uh, the inner circle like that and there you go we have a radio button just like that it was super quick now let's jump into creating buttons different variations of those as well enter a text this time so we can enter a text something like button and set the size to maybe 16 pixels select the text and let's turn it into a component first and what we need to do is turn this into an auto layout so that we can add some padding you can use the right toolbar or uh, the panel and uh, select the auto layout feature and now what we want to do is actually add some padding all around so let's set this to maybe 16 pixels to the left 16 pixels to the right the top and bottom are going to be eight something like this so that we have some custom padding values associated with this now we can't really see what's going on because we need to add a fill color to this so uh, let's toggle the the fill add a background color so maybe like black and then go inside the button and change it to a white text so that we can see what's going on and we can also round out the corners if you want to if it's a part of your brand round out the corners with something like uh, four pixels we have our default button but we want to create variants of this so what we will do is create a variant 
and now we have two buttons and so let's go back to our parent uh, group for the button and let's create a, a property for this one we're going to create a primary and secondary so call this uh, style now for the default button let's rename this to actually let's rename this to primary this is going to be our primary button the second one is going to be our secondary right like that now let's change how this secondary button looks like because the secondary obviously is not going to look exactly the same so uh, let's disable the fill and add a border or a stroke for this one so let's set that to maybe one pixel change the text inside of it to black so that we have a secondary or secondary version of this but we want to get more creative with this because we can have multiple uh properties applied to this so let's go back to our parent component and we can see that we can hit the drop down and add a new property we can set that to icon because we can have a button that has no icon and then also a button with an icon now let's create a variant of this one so hit this plus icon to create or duplicate this one and we have a third variant for this one we're going to set the uh, value for this to with icon so uh, maybe we can set the with icon right and then we'll actually drop in an actual icon um, so i'm using this uh, tool but you can also use figma plugins uh, and drop an icon of your own so let's uh, enter arrow for example i have this icon within this button now the issue is that the button is not aligning vertically correctly so what we want to do is select the, the the button and then adjust our alignment so let's set it to center and also let's fix the uh, padding between the, or the spacing between uh, the elements. So the space between the text and the icon, we can adjust that using this uh, because this is a set to auto layout. We can customize the spacing between the elements within that auto layout. So let's set that to something like eight pixels and awesome. So we have that done. Problem is that we can't really see this. So we can just take this bounding box and extend it uh, just to increase the space of this uh, box. But um, you can see that the arrow fits perfectly within uh, the design and you can see that the padding still remains 16 on either side because we created the custom um, padding. Now let's do the same thing for the secondary button. So just add a variant of that and let's add the icon again so we can just take that icon, copy and paste it within this one. Now let's just fix the alignment again so uh, make sure everything is uh, centered correctly. Okay, so let's go back to our main uh, components and see how this is working. We can see that the style is our property and then within the style we have two values, primary, secondary. And then we also have one set to icon with no icon and with icon. So uh, how this is working is if I select the first button, uh, the style is set to primary with no icon. The secondary one is set to secondary with no icon again. The third one is set to primary with icon. Third one is set to secondary with icon. And let's see how we can actually use this within our designs. Let's duplicate these, go to our assets panel and drop in a button. Uh, we can see that we have a default one right here, but let's go and see how we can customize this and change the values of this. So uh, let's say I want a secondary button instead of a primary, boom. And let's say I want an icon for this one as well. Let's set it to with icon. Boom. Let's duplicate this. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, let's say for this one, we want to change this to a primary. Oh, there we go. We have a primary button with an icon. Oh, I don't want an icon for this one. So let's remove it. No icon. There you go. That's how quick and simple it is to create variants. And there you go. We created some awesome components within Figma very quickly. And we were able to create some variants of them as well. Also, remember the next video, the new video is going to be on how you can create prototypes and how you can create interactive components. And we're going to use what we learned in this video and actually go even further with this. For sure, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and make sure you tune into the new video if you want to learn how to do that. Uh, because uh, the interactive components is currently in beta and not everyone has access to it. So uh, if you want to get some exclusive content from me, definitely uh, check out the new video and I will see you in the next one. So.